we're back for part two. Thank you all for coming back to join me. As you can see, the sun is coming out, so we're gonna get part two going. Hi everyone. This is Drell from Drell Hill and Garden and Journey. I am here to do our part two of our June garden tour. So let's get started. So we're gonna start here at the beginning. We have all these wildflowers that are still growing and these bricks that we have at the front of our first wooden bed. No one has produced a flower yet, so we don't know what kind of flowers they are yet. But here we have a huge basil. And not really sure what kind, but the basil is loving my garden this year and I am loving it because I absolutely love basil. Look how big this thing is, you guys. And just about all the basils in my garden are that big. Here's another one. Pretty big, right? There's a lot of seeds as well. And in between these two, I have some bunching onions that are growing and some sort of weed. Looks like a tree, maybe. Not really sure, but that's not what we're growing. That is a snapdragon right there because they self-seed themselves. And when we get lots of wind and they're dry, those seeds fly in this bed and they make other snapdragons. <laughs> so that's another basil. Then we have still some onions that I need to take out. We have another huge basil, purple basil. She's right there, right there, and right here. She loves it here. And then we step back, we have this huge fennel that has gone to seed. And you can see all those wasps on it without me getting too close and getting stung, but nature is running her course, so I'm gonna let, let it do its thing. We also have a orb weaver that is in this bed as well. I don't know if you guys can see her right there. She's moving back and forth. Let me see if I could zoom in or focus in. Ooh, ooh, that was a wasp fight. I had to move out the way real quick. I don't want to be a casualty. <laughs> there she goes right there. It's an orb weaver. So I'm gonna leave her there to do what she does. She so looks like she's doing something really important right now. So let's back away. Too many wasps. <laughs> So that's that bed. Then on the back of here, we have snapdragons from last fall <laughs> that keeps reseeding itself. It's going to seed and then it reseeds itself. So I'm eventually gonna take all these out unless, you know, it actually lasts throughout the summer. I didn't think it would be, but it looks like it's pretty happy that year. Have all these wasps flying around. And then we have another huge basil right there. And if we step in between the two beds, more onion. And look at these two huge onions right here that I want to get my daughter to harvest later today. Then we have a nasturtium in the middle that's not doing really well because of all this heat, which is understandable. Another basil. More onions. Another basil. And this is a straw flower that has not put on a head yet. But she's pretty big. She's huge. So that's that bed. And then if I come over here to the beginning of this other bed, it's kind of the same as that one. Here we have the wildflowers in the front. One of them did come to a 
to a flower. That's it right there, leaning over. Like I said, we just had a big rain this morning, so everything is pretty much drenched and leaning. But that one did come to fruition. Not sure what kind of flower it is, but here's a beautiful, beautiful Thai basil. Isn't that beautiful, you guys? Wow, that is amazing. I have so much basil that I need to harvest because I want it all. I want it all, you guys. We have more onions I need to get out. More basil. More onions. More basil. <laughs> and as you can see, this is why I say the snapdragons receive themselves. So you see a yellow snapdragon in the middle of there. And she came from there. You can see right there, they're all dry. When we get winds, the winds blow the seeds in the bed. And then they germinate. So here we have another basil. I believe this is a dandelion right here. I didn't plant that, it just grew there. <laughs> More, more snapdragons. Like I said, they go to seed and reseed themselves. So I'll always have snapdragons in the garden, I'm guessing. And then we have another basil. She's not quite as big as the other ones, but she is still standing. More onions. I believe that that is a basil right here. That's why I have not taken it out. And I also have some more Swiss chard grown in here, which is a surprise to me. I thought I had got all the Swiss chard pieces out of this bed, but apparently one still survived. So I'm going to let her grow. Do her thing. You have more basil. Another nasturtium. Next to the snapdragon that reseeded herself. And then this is some sort of weed. Uh, when I looked it up, it said it was a swamp sunflower. So I was waiting to see if it would open and become an actual flower, but it's not doing anything but being weed. So I may take it up. I'm not sure yet. And then here we have this other huge base. <laughs> Okay, now let's go over to the next bed, which is our blueberry bed. And she's doing very, very, very well. And the reason why I say that is because um, I believe on my last garden tour, which wasn't in May, it was April, she was red. A lot of these were red. And it's because I didn't give them enough uh, soil acid acidifier. So if you guys have blueberry plants, blueberry twigs that you're, because I started these from twigs and they're turning red when they do grow their leaves or any blueberry plant, any, yes. And it's, and it's um, turning red. Usually it's because it's not acidic enough. So you may have to add more soil acidifier. And it seems like I need to add more as well because this one hasn't turned fully green yet. And it's been over a month since I added the soil acidifier. So I need to add more to it. Here we have this container full of huge zinnias. I have some cactus zinnias in here and some uh, dreamland zinnias, all types of different zinnias. They are going, uh, some of them are have to deadhead as you can see. But the hummingbirds are loving them. I will deadhead them once they dry out because I want the seeds from them. But they're doing really well in this container. I've never seen zinnias grow this long before. That was my first. So that's exciting. And then here we have this bed that has another huge basil in it that is going to seed. We have some bunching onions that are still going strong. Also some weeds I see I need to pull out. Also another basil that's going to seed. Then we have another bed with basil. Too much basil maybe. But that beautiful Thai basil. And then this 
humongous basil right here. And you would think that this only bed, this bed only had those two in it, right? No, this bed actually has eggplant in it. So I planted three eggplants. So I have two black beauties and one, um, uh, I can't remember her name now. I also put a borage in here. She's not looking good. There she is right there. And I have onion and garlic and marigold in here as well. And the flea beetle has been attacking this, uh, these eggplants back here and some other plants in my garden. Um, I think it's also on some of my, um, ground cherries as well but as you can see little holes that's the flea beetle so I am having to treat it I do spray it also with the insecticidal soap once a week and this is also a straw flower in this bed as well but this bed has some huge basil in it huge so let's go over to the next bed this bed I'm not won't I won't complete this bed until the fall. So this will just be here like this until then. And this is a, a Pennywise mint, I believe. So it's good for pest. Then we have this bed over here. Um, the mosquitoes are out, you guys. They're tearing me up. This bed over here basically is just basil and onions. Right now I have some wild ginger in it and some weeds as you can see. And there's a beautiful, I believe that this is a Cosmo, bright light Cosmo flower. I had to stake her up. She was hanging out of the bed on the ground and she's mixed up in between a basil as well. This mosquitoes and bit me through my pants. This is crazy, crazy. So that's that bed. I'm sorry if I'm speeding up you guys, but I'm trying to get in to go put some bug spray in. I'm trying to find a perfect spot to stop this video. So here we have another bed that has Swiss chard in it. I took this out and it grew back. <laughs> but we're gonna harvest that. It has basil. I have a dill that has gone to seed. I have been collecting the seeds. And it has onions and basil in it as well, and some weeds as well. It's been raining, so the weeds are like going really crazy. Then we have another container of zinnias. I have some purple dream lilies in here as well. Some marigolds, as you can see, and some small little hostas. I thought it was gonna get bigger, but they're still small. And then we have this bed, which is another eggplant bed. I have three of those, well, two of the, well, I can't think of the name of this eggplant now. I said it earlier, but I can't think of it now. So what is it? Rom R Rosa Bianca, that's what it is. So I have two Roman, Roman Rosa Bianca, this one and this one, and this is a black beauty in the middle. And I have marigold right here, marigolds right there as well. And I have a comfrey plant in this bed, dill in this bed, also some porridge in this bed. She's being hidden and she's leaning. And I had a nasturtium, but she's not doing well. And I have put another flower right there too, and it didn't take. But it has tons of onions and garlic in it as well. So let's move on over to these two containers. This is a flower. This is a nasturtium. This is a blue comb, blue comb flower right there. And here is my morning glories. This is the Harlequin morning glories. I did get a chance to see two of her flowers, but I think because it's so hot here in Texas, it's just too hot for her to make any flowers and for them to bloom. I've seen her, had a flower on her about three days ago and it fell off the next day. It's hot here, you guys. 
So here we're back at the evening primrose. Um, then we're gonna go around over here to these containers, which are onions. These are onions, and this was one of those I got from the Dollar Tree. It starts with a T, but it didn't like it came up, but then it died. So I put onions in here, bulbing onions, and then I have some J Johnny Jump Ups here. Originally, I put some binoculars in here, but it didn't come up. So I'm just gonna take these tags out. So this is Johnny Jump Ups. And then here I have some calendula. That's what I originally put in there, but they didn't come up. Those bulbs that I got from the Dollar Tree, well, the Dollar 25, they had three in the pack. Only one came up out of all the packs that I bought. So here is that flower box full of box gloves. That's why I said I have lots of them to replace that one over there. And eventually we're gonna move them all over there into the bed in the ground. And we have more calendula right here. Looking beautiful. I love it. And then we have my grow table. Oh, this grow table is going through it, y'all. So these are all my marigolds I need to get planted. I have some tomatoes and peppers down there that still need to be planted up. I have onions and shallots and cucumbers. Y'all, don't judge me. Don't judge me. I have sunflowers that are... These are supposed to be mammoth. Mammoth sunflowers that are going to flower. These are more pineapple cherry, ground cherries right here. These are my climbing roses. They never came up. Then I have more basil, which I don't need no more basil in my garden, but I have more here on my grill table. And I have borage as well. I know everything's not looking the best, you guys, but this is reality. So, you can see those mammoth sunflowers <laughs> putting on little heads. And then this flower bed, I'm kind of sad about it. This was my, uh, coneflowers coneflower bed it was a mixture of sunset coneflowers and orange and yellow ones and red ones and as you can see they just could not handle the heat it doesn't matter how it didn't matter how many times i watered it a day it always would dry out in its wooden box and they eventually just succumbed to the heat so i am going to collect these heads which are the seeds if you guys did not know that so i am going to collect these heads when they dry so that's currently what i'm waiting on but i was pretty bummed about it but it's okay i'll put something else in this wooden box that can take the texas heat so that's just fine and i think that's it as far as this video goes so this one might be a little bit shorter than the other one, the first one, but at least we got through it. So that was everything. So once again, thank you all for being here. I will come back with a part three where I'm going to go over my trees, all my trees, and I have some more things that I planted down there as well that we'll go through. But that is the garden tour for part two of the early June garden. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope that you come back for part two, for part three. And I hope that you've watched, already watched part one. So thank you all for being here. I appreciate you all. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Please like, comment, and share. And I thank you all so very much. And in the next video, we'll also go over the perennial circle bed. Yes. So that one may actually be a little bit longer. But I look forward to showing it to you all. So you all have an amazing day and happy gardening.